Company after company after company, we've seen Qualcomm, we've seen Il Intel. It is really cascading. How big a problem does this pose for the market more broadly? It's definitely a more aggressive stance than what we've seen so far. And one of the things that's been interesting about the trade rhetoric is that we've focused so much on balancing the trade between us and China, and we focused a lot on tariffs on materials and other goods, but really the target has always been, <clears throat> excuse me, has always been technology. So the fact that we're taking a more aggressive stance in a more targeted way now, I think is probably indicative of the end game. And this is a very different phase, potentially, of this tussle with China, because when, when it was trade, it was okay will you buy more things from us will you let our people in things like that it's not clear what Huawei and China can do to fix this problem right and and that's a perfect point that you know up until this point it has been about other things and it still is I mean really what we're arguing about now is tariffs on the goods that are already in place are we going to put tariffs on the remaining 300 billion so that's not going to go away but it is kind of two different hands right we're worried about the trade balance and and I think we will probably figure that out still this year and that'll be positive for the market it'll be a positive catalyst but what we've been saying this whole time is that's still just a chapter in this book and the book isn't written yet so this continued argument is going to go on probably through the election. Well, fair, and that's putting some binary options for the market. I mean, if you come inside the Bloomberg here, this is JP Morgan's sort of range of predictions. So the bull case for trade, 3,200, the bear is 2,550. Mm -hmm. How do you invest with some? First of all, do you agree? And how do you invest with that? Uh, I think the the bear case seems a little bit low for me. That must be a, a pretty dire circumstance. <laughs> but um, I agree that it's been difficult for an investor to balance the near-term headwinds and some of the volatility that we're going to continue to see probably through the end of June at least with the possibility that we do get a resolution and then you see cyclicals take off and what you don't want I mean what, what investors have experienced even over the last 10 years is the most hated bull market right we don't want to experience that on little bits as we go here so making sure that you're still invested in equities and still exposed to the economy but being careful that in the meantime, you're not suffering all of those sharp drawdowns. A hated bull market, but a stubborn bull market. Yeah. Uh, you can't really defeat it as a practical matter. Just look at last week, which was a very tumultuous week in terms mm -hmm. of trade news. If we look at this, what happened is pretty much every single day, the S&P futures were down. And then when they started trading, it came back up again, often doing better than what we thought we were going to do at the beginning of the day. I mean, it's yeah. quite extraordinary. So our investors basically more sensible. They're not overreacting to the day to day. Or are they overly optimistic? Are they complacent? I think there's an element of both. And when we start days more negative than we end them, I think that is actually an indication that we're overreacting. But we're overreacting to news very quickly. And we're overreacting to news that sometimes is noise. And I think that's the issue here is there is a risk of having too much information. We don't need to react to every single sentence. We don't need to react to every single headline. And what's been happening is, is that's exactly what's taking place. So then what do you do? So do you are you buying the dips? Are you waiting for a bigger one? Are you staying in cash? Are you just sort of holding positions? Like how do you manage it? So first and foremost, I think you continue to sell the rally in tech. So if we have a big down day, that's not a time to sell tech. But if we have an up day, I think you can trim at the margins because, again, that's going to continue to be the place where Trump is targeting. So tech is going to continue to see a lot of that volatility. So selling the rally in tech. And then when you have dips, whether they're corrections or even bear markets, without a recession, and we don't see a recession still this year, those dips are buying opportunities. But where I'd be buying is some of those economic economically sensitive names that aren't super high beta. So you still want to own the industrials, you still want to own the consumer, and you still want to own financials. But I wouldn't be overweighting the really high beta stuff right now.